the gender binary as two boxes that tries to shove people into those values, systems, cultures that everyone doesn't necessarily adhere to. So it's about breaking the box. Gender is the uh, system for describing one aspect of human experience um, that may have to do with sexuality, reproduction, love, romance, and eroticism, parenting, and work, and family, uh, which as you can see is almost everything. My name is Allison. My pronouns are she, they. My name is Gio, and I use they, them pronouns. My name is Mallory, my pronouns are she and they. My name is Sloan, my pronouns are they, them. My name is Susanna Lugo, and I use she and they pronouns. Like, it kind of feels like dual citizenship. Like, if you spent, like, half of your life in, like, some completely different country that was vastly uh, culturally different and then half your life in America and you were asked to choose which one you were like you wouldn't you'd be like I'm both I have dual citizenship or you know I feel like a third culture entirely I feel like I'm experiencing something new and different and unique as it I've always loved dressing up I've always loved dressing up um, and as a kid I would want to dress up as all my favorite characters and some of them were guys and some of them were gals and um, if I dressed up as a girl, nobody ever batted an eye, but if I dressed up as a boy, at, when I was younger, it was more acceptable, but then as I got older, people, I guess, started to question that. And for me, it, dressing up is an opportunity to go and be the, the person that I want to be myself um, in a different form. So if I dress up as Peter Pan, I'm still me, I'm still Susanna, but I'm also Peter Pan. I'm like. This is what I like about cosplay in particular versus just costuming, is that you kind of get to role play that character, you get to imagine yourself in it. And I understand my gender in a very similar way. Like every day I dress up, everyone's always dressing up, everyone's always performing, but every day I dress up and I perform a particular gender. I feel like because I have a more hyper-feminine body, I have been objectified and sexualized all my life, and it just keeps me in that position as like, my body's a woman's body and it's to serve these people. But it's not, so thinking about my body now like as a vessel has just really helped me kind of just like be neutral about it. I don't I have what I call social dysphoria. So I don't have an issue with my breast tissue. I don't have like an issue with the shape of my hips or uh, the pitch of my voice um, or like my hair being long. I have an issue with people sitting down, looking at me and looking at the way that my body was formed because of genetics and hormones and they make a decision about me. I think that the problem is not our bodies. The problem is violence against our bodies to attempt to make them conform to gendered or racialized um, ideas about what's appropriate, where we're allowed to be, and uh, who and how we're supposed to be. Dance for me is obviously, you know, another way of expression, but it's just so like, intimate and because it's with my body and my body is my instrument I feel like I can better navigate the way that I'm like feeling especially like in terms of like my body and the way that I see it I feel like dance is really a way to either question challenge or validate those ideas that I have about myself so something that I explored when I was going through um a treatment earlier this year is after every treatment I would do a self-portrait and it was like interesting because like I could look at myself and like I could take a picture of myself I could take a selfie and then I could paint it and I could draw it and you know I could see like oh like this is who I am 
my gender is like part of everything that I do and like every part of like my identity because it's who you are. It's a big chunk of who you are. Um, but it's just like, you know, figuring out like who I am, what are my feelings? What do I express? What do I see myself? Where do I see myself? Who am I? Now we have this uh, additional sophistication of language and some social space for people to realize that um, maybe being male or female or masculine or feminine um, are too blunt of an instrument to describe some people's experience of gender. And so that's where non-binary comes in uh, as kind of a tool to be more refined, more specific, more sophisticated in our understanding of and expression of gender. Like working with gender, like I've always been really trans. Like I was, I'm hashtag AFAB. So like when I was a little kid, I was like very much like being the boy or boy, like since I was little. Um, and I was like, I identified as like a trans man for a hot minute before I was like, wait a second, that's colonial. <laughs> I kind of decided that these norms are really colonial and in order to decolonize sex and gender, I can't abide by colonial rules. Really, um, I feel like the lack of acceptance for non-binary identities is a result of colonialism. The thing about gender, though, is that like it's whether or not it in itself is like white supremacist, it is like a tool of white supremacy and like a tool of oppression, like within white supremacy and like colonialism and capitalism. And, Which are all those? It's, yeah. <laughs> exploring your gender can mean a lot of different things. In the 1960s, I think that uh, for many women, exploring your gender meant deciding that you were going to take a job outside the home or making a decision not to have children or um, fighting for the right to go to law school. Um, today, it might mean um, uh, making some decisions about which aspects of conventional or traditional um, women's roles or, um, or feminine behaviors you do and don't want to take up and same with men. If you're suppressing a massive part of who you are and you're not confident in who you are, you can't excel because you don't even know who you are. Um, so I think it's something that like people should have exposure to early on so they can figure out like, you know, is who I am a little boy because I was born with a penis and my parents gave me trucks? Or do I want to be a mommy when I grow up? The gesture of turning a mask around. One. So this God is only wood and holes, a blank, like the moon's unlit side, the side without grammar. Two. I stand alone under the stars, audience to an immense quiet. Or not quite alone. Something regards me through an invisible opening. Three, if violence were obsolete, if violence were obsolete, but it is not obsolete. Four, and the smell of the garden, wet blooded and heavy, like the sea, if the sea were earth, a warm wind rises off the surface. The hydrangeas blooms are big, big as human heads among the leaves, white and glowing faintly from within their deep alcoves. Five. The opposite of language is not silence, but space. It's dawn. The dark unjoins and drifts off into light. I enter the house and see with astonishment the difference between my rooms.